we are as a species addicted to story even when the body goes to sleep the mind stays up all night telling okay. itself stories namaskar today i radhama chaudhary and i sahani khanilwal of class 9 welcome our honorable principal sir ma'am vice principal respected teachers and judges and our dear friends to this glorious event of online intersection story narrating competition organized for class 9 under the aegis of ek bharat shreshth bharat program which was announced by honorable prime minister on 31st october 2015 on the occasion of the 140th birth anniversary of sardar vallabh bhai patel which aims to actively enhance the interaction between the people of diverse cultures living in different states and union territories of india the broad objectives of the ebsb initiatives are to celebrate the unity and diversity of our nation and to maintain and strengthen the fabric of traditionally existing emotional bonds between the people of our country promote the spirit of national integration through a deep and structured engagement between all indian states and union territories through a year long planned engagement between states to showcase the rich heritage and culture customs and traditions of either states for enabling people to understand and appreciate the diversity that is in there thus fostering a sense of common identity to establish long term engagements and to create an environment which promotes learning between states by sharing best practices and experiences Rajasthan has been paired with Assam located at the south of the eastern Himalayas which is one of the seven sisters known for its tea silk rich culture and diverse population its culture is a fusion of indo-burmese mongolian and aryan influences the beautiful land is a little paradise on a rocky terrain and worth to be discovered for its pristine beauty so here are the bhavanites of class 9 to commemorate this pristine beauty of assam through narrating and luring assamese folk tales written by assamese authors before diving into the event let's have a glimpse of rules of the competition The theme of the competition is the folk tales of Assam. Each participant will be given three to five minutes each to narrate their stories. Criteria for judgment will be content delivery, voice modulation, props, and overall presentation. So, without any further ado, let's get started. So, first, we would like to invite Sharvan Tejasvi from Class Nine A with the story of the monkey and the crocodile, in which the crocodile tried to betray the monkey. So let's see how this betrayal results. Namaskar, everyone. My name is Sharvan Tejasvi, and I am from class ninth A. I have chosen the story, the monkey and the crocodile. So let's start the story. So once upon a time, in a dense forest, there lived an a old crocodile. So he was very weak and old and feeble because he is on a journey and he is not eating food from so many days so he said to himself oh i have not eaten food from so many days what can i do now i can't hunt also on land because i am old and weak what should i do okay i should go and dive under water and find some fishes then he went under water and tried to catch some fishes but he was not able to catch some fishes and he was tired also so he went under a tree and slept so when he woke up he found a monkey above the tree eating so many delicious mangoes so he asked the monkey oh dear monkey what are you eating can you help me i have not eaten fruit from so many days so can you give me some the monkey replied okay i can give you but these are mangoes and they are very sweet and delicious so they the monkey gave him the fruit and then they enjoy too much while eating the crocodile said him yeah these are very sweet and delicious i luck live i like to eat them every day then from next if then from ev- then every day the the crocodile came to the monkey's tree and eat the mango every day sometimes they play together sometimes they dance and play together so many things and games one day the crocodile asked monkey to b- bring some mangoes for his wife so monkey went to the tree and gave 
gave a very delicious mango to crocodile and then he went to his home then at his home he gave them to his wife and his wife said that oh these are very sweet and delicious then he she said that yeah. if these mangoes are so sweet so who eats them every day how sweet will he be so crocodile replied oh yeah he is very sweet and he is very kind he helped me when i was in a bad and a bad condition and i was hungry and we are best friends and his wife said oh i was thinking something else i think that uh, can you bring me his heart because it must be very sweet and soft and delicious so the crocodile was in a shock for a minute and then he said he is my best friend how can i do this he is my best friend how can i betray to his trust then he because of the pressure of his wife he has to go to the monkey next day then he went to the monkey next day and said him that oh dear monkey can you get uh, go with me and my wife has invited you to the dinner party because she liked your so much delicious and sweet mangoes so the monkey jumped on his back and sat on his back and then he they both went to the house of crocodile while going the monkey asked them oh crocodile what shall i going to make for us can you tell me the crocodile replied oh dear monkey they she is going to make some banana bread because i know they are favorite of you then monkey said you okay it's really my favorite then during the talking the by mistake crocodile said him sorry my dear monkey i am taking you to my house because my wife want to eat your heart suddenly when the monkey listened it he was in a shock for a minute and then he is very smart and clever so he replied to crocodile oh yeah i will be very grateful to give the my heart to your wife but i kept my heart very safely on my tree so we have to go back to my tree and take my heart and then i will give my heart to your wife then they both went to the tree and when the tree came the monkey jumped on the tree and then said to the crocodile you tried to kill me and i i i thought you are that you are my best friend but you betrayed to my trust now i will not give you any of the mango anymore go you uh, my you go the crocodile then the bad crocodile went to his home and then can anybody of you tell me the moral of the story okay now let me tell you the moral of the story i have divided the moral of the story in three parts first that in the time of danger and adversity act like act, act smartly like monkey did and second in the situation in any of the situation do not betray anyone trust third save nature save animals thank you for listening me bye bye thank you for your captivating performance Continuing with the event, next performer coming is Lavanya Jain from Class 9B. She is going to present a story of a man named Onda who will take us on to a horror journey with some giggling busters. Namaskar, my name is Lavanya Jain. My name is Shani Sathri. Today I am going to be narrating it, narrating an Assamese folk tale named Onda. So let's go on an exciting and terrific journey with Onda and the ghosts. Onda was an extremely poor man who lived in the Swalkuchi village with his wife and a daughter. In order to support his family, every morning he would go to different places to for begging. One day, Onda wandered a bit too far in search of some offerings. The sun had gone down and Onda was still far from home. He came across a cemetery while walking through the dense forest. It was a mausia, the new moon day. The wind made mysterious and strange sounds as it went past trees, rustling every leaf along the way. The spooky scene at the cemetery sent chills down on Onda's spine, but he didn't really have any choice. The thought of his wife and daughter waiting for him filled him with courage, and he decided to pass through the cemetery. Meanwhile, the ghosts of the cemetery were in the middle of a pity party. From rotten heart bhuji to pulled eyeballs, there were all kinds of ghostly, rather ghastly delicacies that were being feasted on by the ghosts. The pulvai or the tiny ghosts were hopping around people trees, chasing each other. The elder ghosts were chatting with each other. Tapte, a renowned violinist in the phantom world, was playing a violin whose bow was made of a corpse's bones and the strings were made of a corpse's hair. Oh my God, I'm scared. Hey, it rhymed. Anyways, meanwhile, Onda stepped into the cemetery. 
seeing him, the ghosts were enraged by the nerve of that foolish human. How can a human be so insensitive as to interrupt the talks of the all powerful ghosts? The wind around the cemetery began to pick up pace. So much so that it threw Onda off his feet. Thump. Onda fell hard on the ground. He knew he had no choice but to pass through the cemetery. So he summoned all of his courage and shouted at the top of his lungs. Who are all of you? Have you not heard of the almighty Onda? Which means, let me sit near the fire. Hearing him, the ghosts were terrified. They all bowed and cleared the way for him. Moreover, hearing the word Tapate, the violinist dropped her instrument and hurried in front of Onda. As she stood before him, she said in a cracked voice, Oh, oh my dear Onda, how may this lowly ghost serve you? Serve me, huh? First pay back the loan that you took from me seven years ago. Sir, I, I do not remember taking any loan from you. So you mean to say that the almighty Onda is lying? No, 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 not at all, sir. Uh, if you are saying so, then I uh, must have taken the loan. Kindly tell me how much must I pay you back? Hmm, let's see. But tomorrow morning, you will have to fill the seven pots attached to the pole that is attached to my ceiling. If you fail to do so, I will beat you so hard that your fellow beings won't be able to recognize you. Y yes, yes, I, I will surely do that. After handing the address to her, Onda returned back home. As soon as he entered the house, he took seven pots, cracked open their base and hung them to the pole attached to the ceiling. Very clever indeed. At that night, his family slept in the innermost room as he awaited the arrival of the ghost. Soon Tapati came with all the gold coins she had and began filling the pots. But the hollow pots could barely hold her time. She poured and poured the coins into the pot until the coins fell onto the ground and reached the level of the pots. As the dawn was about to break, the sunlight began scorching Tapati. She pleaded to Onda. Oh, my dear Onda, this is all the wealth that I own. Please let me go, please. I am very much impressed by obedience, so I will let you go. Thank you, oh mighty Onda. Thank you, oh kind Onda. Saying so, Tapate fled from Onda's house. After all the wealth his family has received, they were no longer forced to live the life of penury and lived happily ever after. Thank you for listening. It was an outstanding performance. Moving forward, let's invite Urmi Raut from Class 9C with the story of a selfish man who is after gold coins given to him by a cobra. So let's see the consequences of this selfishness. Namaskar, my name is Urmi and I am going to narrate a story about a Brahmin and a cobra. Once there was a Brahmin named Haridat who had a ranch in a specific town. He was persevering. Yet regardless of his persistent effort on his ranch, his homestead didn't deliver enough for him to thrive. At some point while working in the ranch, he was unable to bear the heat and decided to rest under a tree in his home shed. While he was resting there, a cobra arose out of the ant colony dwelling place. Noticing this, he figured, this cobra should be the god of my home shed. From today, I will love and offer obligations to the cobra and maybe the cobra will favor the ranch with rich produce. The Brahmin welcomed milk in a plate and served it before the ant colony dwelling place and stated, Oh dear, I didn't know about your essence. O oh, defender of my ranch, it would be ideal if you pardon me and acknowledge my contribution. After the convention, the Brahmin went home. The following day, when Brahmin went back to the ant colony dwelling place, he saw a gold coin in the place in which he served milk in. The Brahmin did this for many days. The Brahmin used to offer milk to the cobra and he would get a gold coin in return. The Brahmin, after some time, was expected to visit another town. Why? Altogether, the love for the cobra was not hampered. The Brahmin taught his child to serve a uh, milk to the cobra at due time and return home. Adhering to his direction, the Brahmin style of a milk to the cobra and went back to the ant colony dwelling place. After he returned home, he saw a gold coin in the plate in which he served milk in. He was stunned to see that and he thought, 
If the cobra gives a gold coin each day, then there must be a heap of gold coin inside the ant colony dwelling place. I can take them all off chance and slaughter the cobra. The following day, rather than offering milk to the cobra, the Brahmin's child trusted that the cobra will rise out of the ant colony dwelling place and he would hit him with a stick trying to murder him. The cobra retaliated indignantly as it was anything but a destructive bow and touched the Brahmin's child. The Brahmin style passed on from the toxin. The, his, his body was incinerated in the very same homestead by his family members. When the Brahmin returned home, he heard what had occurred and his uh, and his son has kicked the bucket. He, is, he, is, he and his family has decided to slaughter the cobra for his actions. The Brahmin was un was distressed for his child's demise but however didn't support the cause of conduct for his passing. The Brahmin instead didn't accuse the cobra, instead guarded the activities of the cobra. The Brahmin next day went back to the ant colony dwelling place and served milk. And he said to himself, today I will keep a watch and on the activities of the cobra and because of him I have lost my son. The cobra on hearing this came out of the ant colony dwelling place and said and went up against him and said, take your candle at yourself. You have failed to remember your child's demise. You have come here out of revenueness for a gold coin. You don't come here out of regard but for eagerness for a gold coin. Our companionship cannot last any longer. The Brahmin was really sad to hear about this. The cobra proceeded. I have cycled your child for his actions. He, whatever he did was an energetic imprudence. Your child had, had, your child had got selfish for a gold coin and had kicked the bucket. From now on, make sure that you don't get selfish for the gold coin. The cobra gave the Brahmin a precious stone and said, Broken love can never be re-established by the presentation of warmth. And loudly said, Never come back here again. The Brahmin went back to his family and lamented the child's silliness and his passing. The Brahmin did revisitation of the cobra once more. Thank you. Thank you so much for your marvelous performance. Next performer is Vishali Singh of class 9B. She is going to narrate the tale of the kite's daughter. It is about the unwanted daughter who is deliberately separated by the family and about how she faces difficulties in her life. As she is not present, uh, shall, uh, we should move further. Okay. So proceeding ahead with class 9A, we would like to welcome Kashish Chahab with a story of a man named Onda. It's about a poor man who takes help of ghosts to have money. It happens sometimes that ghosts get afraid too. Namaskar. Today, Akashish Shahar of class 9A will be narrating the story in the topic of Asami's of Tales. I have taken the topic Onda, the Almighty. Yes, so Onda was an extremely poor man who lived in Suwalkuchi village along with his wife and a daughter. In order to support his family, he, every morning he would go to different places to collect arms. One day, Onda wandered a bit too far in search of some offerings. The sun had gone down and Onda was still far from home. He came across a cemetery while walking through the dense forest. It was Amavasya, the new moon day. The wind, the sound, the wind made eerie sounds as it, were, as it went past the trees, rustling every leaf along the way. The spooky sight of the symmetry sent chills down on her spine, but she didn't really have a choice. The thought of his wife and daughter waiting for him filled him with courage and he decided to go to the cemetery. Meanwhile, the ghosts of the cemetery were in the middle of a get-together party. From Rotten Heart Guruji to Kulk Daibox, everything was feasted by the apparitions. The pulvai or the tiny ghosts were hopping around the people trees, chasing each other. The tapte, or very own guitarist of the Phantom World, was playing her guitar, whose strings were made up of corpse hair and the body of the corpse bones. The Bordoizilla, a female strong spirit, was sharing her plight as she had to visit her husband's home. As she shared her story, Ta Onda stabbed into the cemetery. 
all the ghosts were instantly incensed that how a how dare a human be so insolent to interrupt the talk of the most powerful ghost the wind around the cemetery began to pick up pace so much so that a tree on the of his feet and damp on the fell out hard on the ground he knew he had no choice so he summoned all of his courage and shouted at the top of his lungs who are all of you have you not heard about the almighty anda mujhe tap de de saying this he began swung the swinging the stick endlessly in his hand hearing him all the ghosts were terrified they bowed and cleared the way for him moreover hearing the word tap de the guitarist dropped her instrument and hurried in front of anda she begin in her grand voice oh my janda how can this lowly ghost serve you serve me so you want to serve me so it's been like the loan that you took from me seven years back but sir i don't remember taking any loan from you so you are saying that the almighty anda is lying shouts anda angrily no no not at all sir if you are saying me then i must have taken the loan kindly tell me how much i should pay back Mm, let's see um okay so by tomorrow morning should all the seven pots hung by the pole attached to my ceiling and if you fail to do so i will be so hard that even your fellow beings won't be able to recognize you saying this on on the begin hitting the ground frantically with a stick yes sir yes i will surely do that handing his address after handing his address to that day on the return back home he took seven pots cracked open their base and put them on the attach them to the pole on the ceiling on that night anda's whole family slept in the innermost room and anda sat under the pots waiting for the arrival of the tapte soon tapte arrived with all the gold coins she had she started pouring one by one all the coins but the pots could barely hold the time she poured and poured till the coins reached the level of the pots the day the day was up the dawn was about to break the sunlight started scorching i'm oh, sorry started scorching top this skin she pleaded oh my janda please please let me go please be kind to me i have done all the wealth i have please let me go hmm i'm really impressed by i'm really impressed by your obedience so i will let you go thanking after thanking anda top this fled away from his home and by all the wealth up they gave to anda his family was never forced to live a life of penury and lived happily ever after thank you indeed a praiseworthy performance it was proceeding ahead with class 9b we shall invite divyanshi goel with a story of tejimola this story is about a girl who is hated by her stepmother so let's see the consequences of this hatred नमस्कार मो नाम दिव्यांशी गोयल मो नवम श्रेणी छात्री एंड आई एम हियर विद अ टेरिफाइंग स्टोरी तेजी मोला वंस अपॉन अ टाइम इन असम देयर लिव्ड अ मर्चेंट विद हिज स्मॉल डॉटर तेजी मोला अनफॉर्चूनेटली व्हेन शी वाज वेरी यंग हर मदर डाइड एंड शी यूज्ड टू लिव विद हर स्टेप मदर ऑल्सो हर स्टेप मदर डिडंट लाइक हर बट स्टिल प्लेड एन एक्ट दैट शी लव्स हर एंड वुड से टू तेजी मोला Oh dear Teji Mola, Mama loves you. This continued for a long. One day, merchant came to his daughter. Teji Mola, Teji Mola. Yes, Daddy. I am going to city for some work, and it may take months to come back. I gonna miss you, Daddy. From that day onwards, stepmother started showing her real colors. She would say to Teji Mola. to do all the work of home and poor teji mola had to do it one day mother started thinking hmm teji mola is getting older day by day and her expenses are also increasing how can i save this money idea i should kill her by this i can save a lot of wealth good idea and she went inside Teji mala Teji mala Yes ma I'm very hungry make some rice for me Of course ma When Teji mala bent it down to put some rice in the water her mother crushed her hand in the boiling water and her skull too and Teji mala died 
Her mother took her dead body and buried it into her garden. And she lived happily for some days. After a month or so, she got the news that her husband is coming. Oh gosh, my husband is coming. I shall throw all the grass in the river. And she did so. She take the grass and throw it into the river. But in river, the grass got changed into a beautiful flower, which was a miracle. And her husband was passing from the same river. When his husband seen that flower, he said, Wow, what a beautiful flower. I shall take it for my little girl, Teji Mola. Oh, daddy. Oh, papa. I'm your little girl, Teji Mola. He got surprised and said, If you are my little daughter, then you are going to change in a beautiful butterfly because my daughter never says no to me. And this is what happened. There came a beautiful butterfly. He got very angry. And when he reached home, his wife came. Dear, you have came. I was missing you from so long. Where is Teji Mala? Dear, she went to her friend's house and said she's never going to return back. You evil lady, you are the biggest mistake of my life. Uh, and get out of my house. And he started crying in front of God. God, please return me back, my daughter. God, please return me back, my Teji Mola. If this beautiful butterfly is my Teji Mola, then please return me back, my Teji Mola. Please, God, please. And this is what happened. There came our cute and charming Teji Mola. From that day onwards, father-daughter duo lived happily. Thank you. Indeed, an unforgettable story presentation. But we should always remember that hatred should not be ex exceeded to this extent that we take such steps. Moving on with class 9C, we would like to call upon Sanskriti Raj Kautam with the story The Elephant's Nose. This is a mythological folktale of Assam about how the elephants got their big trunks. So let's see the story behind that tusker's trunk. Namaskar. Earlier, elephants were not having big chunks as they are having now. So what could have happened that elephants now are having those enormous chunks? So let's get back to that era where at that time the uh, there was a huge scarcity of water and the elephant named Cacao suffered from the same. Ah, oh, there is no water at all. I can't drink even a single drop of water. Oh. Cacao was really sad from the incident. Thus, he walked around here and there in search of water. Ah, I found the river. Thank God. He was about to drink water, but a ferocious crocodile came up. Hey, this is my river. Don't even dare to drink water from it, or else you'll regret it. The cro cacao got scared and he went. Oh, pardon me, I'll go. One early afternoon, the uh, crocodile was sleeping. And Cacao, took, and Cacao was trying to seize the opportunity. Wow, he's sleeping. Now I can go and drink water. He was about to start, but then suddenly the crocodile woke up. Hey, it's you again. I told you before that you need not to come here again. Now you'll suffer the consequences. He took the trunk, he took the trunk of elephant from his mouth and start biting it. But the elephant was having no pain of the same. He said that I'm not having any pain. So the crocodile was very sad and suddenly he noticed that the elephant's chunk has got bigger. And from that time onwards, the elephants are having big chunk. Every story is alone without a moral. The moral of the story is that the great surprises of your life are as a gift. Thank you. What a lovely presentation. Finally, the mystery is revealed. 
Next performer from class 9B coming is Devanshi Atha with the story of the goddess Kamakya, which is about the people living in the Garu Hills district of Assam, the cruel king, and how Kamakya goddess came in the Garu Hills district of Assam. Namaskar, everyone. Today I am going to narrate the story of the story of the goddess Kamakya. Yes, Goddess Kamakya. Goddess Kamakya's temple in Guwahati near Assam is very well known. Every day she is worshipped by thousands of people. And it is said that she grants the wishes of the person who worships her with great devotion. But, but there was no Kamakya Devi and her temple at this place before. And this is the story of how Kamakya Devi came there. The people who live in Garo Hills district and its adjoining places are called Garos. The Garo Hills district is to the north of the Maiman Singh in East Pakistan. In ancient times, the Garos lived in a country called Mandalay. They were prosperous. They lived in big villages. They built big and high houses for themselves and magnificent temples for their gods and goddesses. They had their kings and chieftains. The Garos were once suddenly atta attacked by a vast number of men from the north. The Garos defended themselves with all their might, but the enemies were much larger in number and had more weapons. Thus, the Garos were defeated. A certain number of division of the Garos was settled in a country called Seleram mid -Dijek. There was a woman among them called Nonoini Nono Michek. She had in her she had in her an image of the goddess Fujo. Goddess Fujo means the one who causes living beings to born, seeds to sprout, flowers to bloom, and mature into fruits. And she used to carry this image always on her head. An Assamese king, Lila Singh, reigned that area at that time. He was extremely cruel and wicked. He was so heartless that he used Garos as beast of burden. And the good-natured Garos could not tolerate this treatment anymore. So they waged a war against King Lila Singh. There were leaders such as Gyume, Asil, Domepa, Kapisa, who fought bravely against King Lila Singh. As usual in a war, the Garos the people were living a very disturbed life. The houses were destroyed. There was no food and people were going far away in search of a new place to settle. Nunoi Nanuki was also escaping with her children. The children were tired and hungry and they were crying aloud. To pacify them, Nunoi Nanuki placed the image of Goddess Fujo on the ground and rested for a while on the way. After some time, when she wants to resume her journey, she stretched her hand and tried to lift up the image. But the image was hard fixed at the spot. And she tried hard to take it away. But in vain, she realized that the goddess wants her to, wants her to stay where she was. She performed her kirita and worshipped her with great devotion and and. From that time ever, the goddess Fujo remained for uh, at that place, not here, but where Nuni Nanuki placed her, and she has been worshipped on there for ages, and and from that time the Garos called that place Seladam Midaychek, which means the century of the past, and not only that, the peoples other than the Garos called her Kamakya. Kamakya Devi. Very quickly, Kamakya Devi had become the most popular deity in Assam. And it is that we all learned that if we have the belief, then we, automatic we automatically get the path to go on away. Thank you. Enough noteworthy performance it was. This divine tale has produced its spirituality in my mind. Now let's welcome our next story narrator, Divisha Agar from class 9th A, with the story titled The Fortune Teller. It is a story about a man who accidentally gets a lot of money and becomes rich. Let's move ahead and see that how we all can become rich. Namaskar, today I'm going to narrate a story about how 
an ordinary man accidentally becomes rich. So it all starts with a day, and it was little drizzle on that day. And Poring, a farmer, said to his wife, "It's cloudy today, and I feel like having rice cakes. Can you bake some for me?" His wife agreed. While Poring goes out for work, his wife nicely prepares those rice cakes. She baked two scores of rice cakes and then put them on a bamboo tray. Then she ate three scores out of them and put the remaining in a bowl. When Poring comes back from work, he sees that there's a bowl full of rice cakes for him, and he's so happy, he's so delighted. But suddenly, his eyes fell onto the bamboo tray, which was hanging on the wall. He saw that there are impressions left for the rice cakes on the bamboo tray. When he counts those impressions, he finds that three scores of rice cakes are missing. He immediately called his wife and said, "And said, where are my three rice cakes?" His wife knew that he has got to know that I have eaten the rice cakes. His wife immediately left that place, but still she was mumbling to herself, "How come Pooran got to know that I have eaten the rice cake? I didn't even tell him." So she just uh, narrated the story of rice cakes, how her husband got to know that she has eaten the rice cake to the woman she met on her way, and confided her uh, and confided the story to the woman she met on her way, and concluded. Her husband was in fact a fortune teller, and this word quickly spread among the villagers, and everyone got to know that Poring was a fortune teller. So one day, a farmer lost his black cow, and after searching for days, he came to Poring, whom he had recently heard to be a fortune teller. Coincidentally, that morning, Poring saw a black cow grazing in his field behind his homestead. So he said to the villager, "Go and find your cow uh, behind my homestead." The villager followed his word and immediately found his cow. From that day, it became well grounded that Poring was a great fortune teller. Now this word even reached to the king that Poring is a fortune teller. King, incidentally, the king has lost his a gold necklace which was very precious to him. He called Poring and asked him to find the necklace. Before that, he warmly, king warmly welcomed Poring. And asked that he should be served with refreshments. Pouring felt very pleased as he was served with such a heavenly food in front of him that rice doi, which is curd in Assamese, and he was so happy to see such delicacies in front of him. But at the same time, he was depressed because he was not the true fortune teller. He was thinking, "How I would tell him? Where is the necklace? Where is the who has stolen it?" I'm not the true fortune teller. Oh no, he's gonna imprison me. Now with such a fear, fear and worry, he he when he starts eating the rice and doi, the curd, he say, "Oh doi, eat well today. Who knows what king is going to do you tomorrow? Oh doi." Now the king's queen was standing at the corner and heard for him saying, "Oh doi," she heard in such a way like, "Oh doi." Hadoy, her name, the king's queen's name was Hadoy. So she heard in such a way, Hadoy, oh, eat well today. Who knows what king is going to do you tomorrow? Fortune teller got to know that I have stolen the necklace. Oh, uh, she immediately come. Hadoy immediately comes out and panically said, Oh, fortune teller, I beg you, please don't reveal the secret that I am the embezzler of necklace. Please, I beg you. I will keep the necklace in King's handy box, and I swear I will never do such mistake. I will never do embezzling again. I swear. Poring was saved. He was like, oh, yeah. But he also felt pity on her, so he forgave her. And next day, when King summoned Poring, King asked for the necklace. Poring said, "Your Am I Majesty? I don't see anyone stealing your necklace. Instead, I think it's in your handy box." When the king ordered to bring his handy box, everyone was astonished to see that necklace was in the handy box. The king rewarded him. The king was very happy, and he rewarded him with land, cash, silver, gold, and that's how Poring became rich, and he lived happily after. What a fortunate performance! Hmm. So that was the secret behind becoming rich. Moving further, I would like to invite Meghna Garg of Ninth B with a story, the elephant's nose. Her story is about how elephants got their nose. So let's listen the story behind it. Namaskar. My name is Meghna Garg. My name is Shreeni Shatri. 
Standing beside you is Meghna Rai from class 9B. And I am here to get you introduced to a very uncommonly asked question. How do elephants have such big noses? Which very well describes the title of my story, The Elephant's Nose. Originally an Assamese spoke to. But before beginning, let me get you introduced to the characters of my story. So, hello all. I am Snehu the Elephant and I live in the Puzzlewood Jungle. Namaskar. I'm your narrator and my name is Bubbly. I am the ferocious crocodile and I live in the Limpopo River. Now it's the time to meet the most mischievous and the funniest character of my story. Ha! I am the notorious toad and I love to irritate the crocodile. <laughs> now I take you all back in time when elephants had small trunks with stubbed noses. It was shorter than their tusks, fitting right in between them. One year, it did not rain for many months in the Puzzlewood jungle, which resulted in a severe condition of drought. All the animals in the forest were very, very thirsty and desperately searching for a source of water. The Limpopo River used to flow not very far away from the forest and Snehu decided to go there in search of water. Little did he know, the river was inhabited by a ferocious, bright green crocodile. Oh, I am scared. Anyways, as soon as the crocodile saw Snehu drinking water from his river, he cried, I am the king of this river. And how did you dare to drink water from here? It's my property. The elephant knew it was a risk to pick a fight with the crocodile. So he decided to come back when the crocodile would be sleeping. In the same river, there also lived a shiny green and mischievous toad. Whenever the crocodile would be swimming across the river, the toad would hop onto his back and enjoy a ride. <laughs> I am the notorious toad and my job is to irritate and frustrate the crocodile. I absolutely love doing that. <laughs> the crocodile was annoyed with giving free rides to the toad. He used to make frantic attempts to get rid of the annoying toad. One afternoon, the crocodile lay asleep on the river bank. Snehu decided to make most of the opportunity to drink some water from the river. He tiptoed to the river and began gulping down water. Just then, Toad jumped onto his favorite spot, the crocodile's back. The crocodile was irritated. He began to swim around the river and shake his body violently. Now I shall get rid of you, he cried at the Toad. But the Toad was unmoved. Suddenly, the crocodile noticed the elephant and said, How dare you drink water from my river when you were told not to? Mad with rage and unable to get rid of the toad, the crocodile decided to vent all his anger on Snehu. He caught hold of Snehu's nose and began dragging him into the water. Poor Snehu started to pull back and cry. Let go of me, please. Let go of me. My nose hurts. But the crocodile showed no mercy. Snehu's nose became longer and longer until the crocodile had no option but to let go of it. Snehu saw a long trunk hanging down from his face. Angry Snehu sucked all the water from the river and then he sucked some mud. He sprayed it on the crocodile and the toad. Since then, elephants have long trunks and crocodiles and toads are not bright green anymore. This was how elephants got their long noses. The trunk would go on to become a useful body part. And that is why it is often said, good things sometimes come as a surprise. I hope you all enjoyed traveling with me back in time and got the answer to a very mysterious question. Now I shall take a leave. This is Bubbly standing up. Wow, what an exotic story and performance it was. Moving towards the last but not the least performance from class 9th D, let's call upon Sarthak Saxena for the story of how Peacock came on the earth. So now let's see, what's the story behind it? Namaskar to one and all present here today. I, Sarthak Saxena, is going to narrate a story. As you know, the title of my story is How Peacock Come on This Earth. In the Assam, there is a type of hill people called Garos. In the time of old, there was a very rich Garo who had a very beautiful daughter. According to the custom among the Garo, she had to be higher of her father's property. 
When she grew up, she was married to a cousin on the side of her mother. Her father owned a very attractive piece of silk stitches with the colorful threads. This was the magical silk. The goddess, and now you will ask how the silk come, how the magical silk come to him. The goddess gave this silk to the great 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 grandmother of Garu's wife, and one should murmur the murmur the mantra before touching this silk, or something very indecent will happen. And that you will know after we start the story as in the course of time garo and his wife grew older and died the girl and his husband got all the properties of the rich garo they also got the magical silk as i have told you before while putting on the day it was a very happy and a joyful day the garo and his wife were living very happily the garo's wife put the silk outside to sun it and she was uh, hoping that she will she will go to the nearby stream to catch a prawns before going to the to catch to the prawns she asked her husband not to touch the not to touch the silk even if there is a heavy rain but and it was minimum chance to the heavy rain because it was very sunny but who knows the god wills suddenly the clear sky turned into black and the suddenly rain come. Therefore, the Garo uh, screamed her wife, but she now answered. But then he decided to touch the he decided to take off the silk because it was very wet. And then when she came at home, she saw that her husband was converting into the male bird as i have told you in the starting that something very grim will happen if someone touched the silk without the month and then the some part of the silk was left covering his body she by mistake touches the silk without remembering the month at the time she also get it converted to the female bird and do you know what they become? They become peacock and the peahens. And whenever the rain comes, and whenever the cloud gather, rain come and the storm shatter, they cry and they fear and they live very hard because their feathers get wet. Thank you. And no story is complete without the moral. So the moral of the story is don't be in hurry. Use wisely. Thank you. What a fabulous story. Next performer is Vishali Singh of class 9D. She is going to narrate the tale of the kite's daughter. It is about the unwanted daughter who is deliberately separated by the family and about how she faces difficulties in her life. Once upon a time, in a kingdom, there lived a rich potter. He had great wealth, but he did not have any son. Even though his daughters were smart and capable, still he wanted a son, because he believed that only a son could be as good as a potter as he was and continue the family business. Thus, he was very sad. One day, he warned his wife, If you give birth to a daughter again, I will sell you to the Nagas. Hearing this, the wife became very scared and went to her mother's home. The misfortune. She had a daughter this time as well. Seeing her baby girl, the potter's wife's mouth dried. She quickly put her baby in a sorrow, covered her with rags and set her adrift on the river. 
She was very sad to part with her precious little daughter, but was terrified with her selfish and stubborn husband. But was but was terrified with her selfish and stubborn husband. A washerman saw the soul floating on the river, and and swam across to see what was inside. Discovering an abandoned, newly born girl, he decided to adopt her. As he was pulling the sorrow to the riverside, a kite swooped in, clutched the baby, and flew away. The kite put the baby in her nest, which was on an antwood tree. The kite, smitten by the little rosy-cheeked baby girl, decided to raise her as her daughter. The kite collected food for her daughter every day as she flew to different places. Likewise, she stole jewelry and collected many things for her beloved daughter. The girl grew up on a branch of a tree and was as beautiful as a fairy. The kite was the kite was becoming fearful of leaving her alone in the nest. So one day she told her daughter that if you leave me immediately or you are scared, then just repeat what I say and I will appear in front of you. One day the daughter was sitting on the branch while combing her hair. A merchant passing by decided to rest under the same tree. As he was resting, a strand of hair fell on his lap. He looked all around, but finding no one, he looked up at the tree and saw an enchanting girl combing her hair. The awestruck merchant called out to the girl, Who are you? Are you a god or a human? Are you a fairy or a witch? Why are you sitting on the tree in the afternoon? The kite's daughter had never seen another human before. Fearful and unable to answer the questions, she called her mother by enchanting the line she had told her. As soon as she said the lines, the kite appeared in front of her. The daughter pointed to the strange man under the tree. The kite saw the young merchant and thought to herself that if he was a good man, she could get her daughter married off to him. She thought, who better to keep my daughter safe from other people than a good and loving husband? The kite flew down and narrated her daughter's story to the merchant. The merchant said, I have a plenty of wealth. I'm a rich man. However, I already have seven wives. If you don't have any complaints regarding that, I promise you that I'll keep her happy and content. I will never hurt her. The kite thought it through and decided that despite the fact that he had seven wives, her daughter's safety mattered more. The kite persuaded her daughter to go with the merchant and said, Remember, whenever you meet me, just call out to me as I have taught you and I'll appear. The merchant took the daughter to his house and treated her with great love. He was often away on business, so she had to live with his other wives. However, the seven wives were very upset at having to share their space and wealth. They were already sharing the house among the seven of them. Moreover, the new wife rarely participated in household homes. Thus, one day, they all came to the kite's daughter and said, Do you think you are some fairy princess? We maintain the fields, farm the land, and cook all the meals. Will you just laze around and eat? You should cook rice today. The kite's daughter had never made rice before in her life. Saddened and scared, she called out to her mother. The mother appeared and she said, Mother, my sisters want me to cook rice today, but I have never made rice before in her life. They are angry that I don't help around the house. The mother said, Don't be scared. I'll help you. The kite then told her daughter the way rice and curry could be cooked and said, it is easy and the next time you will cook, you will find it more easy. After a while, you will see that rice and curry are ready. The kite flew away and daughter followed her instructions. Finally, the wives were satisfied with the work and left her alone to do all the housework. After a few days, as Buhag Bihu neared, the husband gave each of his eight wives five kilograms of cotton and said, You all must weave clothes for me to wear during the Bumal I will see who made the best set of clothes for me. The seven of the wives separated out the threads and started weaving the clothes. 
but the kite's daughter had never made clothes before. Thus, saddened, she went to call out her mother. Her mother appeared and said, Don't scare, just do what I say. Just put all the cotton in four hollow bamboo stalks and give them to your husband when he asks for them. The kite flew away and the daughter did as she was told. Everyone was very surprised at her cotton being lying there and there while all the wives were busy weaving day and night. On the day of Bihu, the wives presented their woven garments while the kite's daughter presented the stalks. Everyone was very surprised at her audacity and some of them even laughed. The merchant was red-eyed with anger and said, What is this? I told you to weave the clothes for me. What have you bring in these stocks? The kite pointed to see the uh, the kite told the merchant to see inside the stocks. Beautifully woven, fine sets of clothes were discovered inside. The other clothes gifted by his wife seemed like rags compared to these. Thus, the merchant tore all the clothes given by his seven wives and and chose to wear the kite's daughter's garments. Thus all the wives became very jealous of her. One day the wives found out that a kite was secretly helping her daughter. Thus they all felt betrayed that while they worked hard all the day, the new wife could easily get the work done without any effort. When the kite, one, one wife heartbroken on her clothes being torn, decided to take revenge. She learned the words to call the kite while observing the new wife in secret. She went to the yard and called out to the kite in the way the daughter did. When the kite appeared, she beat her with bamboo until she died and buried her. The kite's daughter called her many a times, but she didn't come. Slowly and slowly she realized that the kite had been killed by someone and tried with a broken heart. Once the merchant went away on business for a long time, he told his wives to take care of the kite's daughter. This preferential treatment made the wives very angry. One day a trader selling combs came to the port where the merchant lived. The six wives who hated the new wife by then hatched a plan to get rid of her. They told the trader that in, uh, they said to the trader, in exchange of your wares, we will sell you a beautiful maiden. They told him about her beauty and grace in such a way that the trader was very tempted. He, he accepted the deal. The wives went to the kite's daughter and said, there is a trader outside full of boats with palms. Go and see if you want something for yourself. The kite's daughter really wanted to go, but her husband had told her not to go outside the house. But the wives called her again and again and finally succeeded in getting her to the boat. As the trader, as soon as she was on the boat, as planned earlier, the trader set sail from the boat. He took he took her to his house and gave her the duty of looking after his stock of dried fish. Every day, every day, she sat and guarded the fish singing. I was set afloat on the river by my bottom mother. I was raised in love and kindness by my kind mother. I was married off to a wealthy trader. I was sold to a peddler by my seven sisters. The peddler gave me his dried fish and made me their keeper. A week passed by. And the kite's daughter sat every day singing her song and guarding the fish. One day, the merchant was passing by that area and heard the song. He recognized his wife's voice. He looked here and there, but then he thought that he had ordered her to stay at home only. So he returned home in puzzlement. He found that his new wife wasn't there. He said, where is my new wife? The other wives told him that she had left for her mother's home and didn't return. Even the seventh wife didn't have any idea about her as she was not involved in the planning. But the merchant understood everything and went to that area where he had heard his wife's voice and found her there. The trader told everything to him. He angrily went home with his new wife and scolded the six wives and gave them divorce. They left from the house. After that, the merchant lived happily with his seventh wife and the kite's daughter. So the moral of the story is, 
we should never be jealous of anyone because jealousy always destroys human and relationships there is no greater glory than love not any greater punishment than jealousy thank you what a charismatic performance we know you wanted to hear more such interesting stories but this was all about today's performances we saw that story narrating is one of the hardest art to perform but needless to say our performers performed it flawlessly competition